morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. If you're watching us live on Facebook, thank you for that. Please remember that Facebook does keep these shows up uh, pervasively so you can go back and check them out at your leisure. Uh, please remember we also upload them to our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. We have audio and video versions there for you to check out. Getting into your traffic this morning, kind of rough, looking at some accidents just after Millerville and accidents just after rains. It's causing some pretty, pretty heavy delays backed up past Jubin Road on I-12 westbound. That, of course, is causing some heavy stackups at Forge Club Road, River Road, and 190, and you're looking at some delays on 64 heading into Central. So, tough commute this morning. I do apologize. I'm just the messenger, but that's what you're looking at this morning. You're looking at a pretty tough commute getting into Baton Rouge. It's currently 79 degrees, 94 degrees is your high today, 76, your overnight low. Looking at a 40% chance of rain just this afternoon. I'm starting at around 2 p.m. going into the evening, so please keep that in mind. Never hurts, uh, of course, here in the Louisiana summer to throw an umbrella in the car on your way out the door. Getting into it today, uh, interesting story came out yesterday. A Nile monitor lizard uh, was thrown out by an individual's mother in Walker. The lizard is now free. Uh, he's telling individuals that it's pretty easy to tell what it looks like. Now, Nile monitor lizards can get up to roughly six feet, and they can get big. He says right now the lizard is probably afraid. It will act out of fear, which means suggesting that it is dangerous. The Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office is currently working with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to try and track down the lizard. And of course, they are asking for any help. So please, uh, please keep that in mind. And <laughs> I am sorry about that, Michelle. That's, uh, that's, I, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they'll catch it sooner rather than later. Again, it does get up to six feet. Treat, please don't try to catch it yourself. Uh, the individual did say that it is legal for him to own it. He does have a uh, a cage slash uh, habitat for it at his home. He just needs it back. So again, Sheriff's Office and Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries are currently looking for a Nile monitor lizard in the Walker area. Some good news for uh, those of you who have kept track with Nick Tuye. Of course, Tuye was the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Deputy, uh, originally from Livingston Parish, uh, who was shot four years ago and has been going on, undergoing extensive treatment uh, at a rehab facility in Houston uh, for four years, really. Uh, they, those shootings occurred just before the flood, and he, uh, he has returned. That family, uh, per an announcement from the father, James Tuye, on Nick Tuye Strong Facebook page, they, the family has decided that it was time for them to come back to Baton Rouge. The, the living situation there just was not conducive for the family. Uh, so they have returned. They finally found a home in Baton Rouge. It's something they kept under wraps for a while. But they are back here. Uh, it was a, it, it's a big move for the family. Uh, it means Nick's feeling a little better, uh, and they're able to move back here and be closer to family and friends. That was a very difficult four years for the family. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Yesterday it was announced that uh democratic well the what figures to be the democratic nominee for president joe biden announced that kamala harris a senator from california would be his running mate as vice president now she is a uh, as mentioned a senator from california she is also a former prosecutor and attorney general from the state uh, she was criticized early on in the democratic nomination process for being not quite liberal enough uh, and also being uh, having a very hardline stance on crime. Uh, so it, it was an interesting choice, uh, but the presidential nominee, Joe Biden, from the Democratic side, did announce in the spring that he was going to choose a female as a running, running mate, and, and here we are. So that part of the ballot is set. Of course, the Republican National Convention is coming up. Uh, we'll see if uh, President Donald Trump will again run with Vice President Mike Pence. The conversation to unify sales taxes has again come up in conversation. Uh, this is something that comes up a lot in Louisiana. Right now, individual parishes monitor their own sales tax collections and handle that themselves. Here in Livingston Parish, it goes through the school board. Now, what they want in terms, and let me explain. 
they being uh, a large part of the business community is interested in is unified sales tax because it makes it easier. They, especially if you have multiple locations, you do not have to deal with multiple sales tax collection officials. You just deal with the state. Now, local sales tax officials are worried about that because a lot of times, you know, there's certain businesses that can fly under the radar and not pay sales taxes. They have a better handle on what's going on in their individual parishes. So this is this has been a distinctive back and forth. Uh, you know, a lot of them are uh, a lot of local sales tax collection officials are worried. You send your sales tax off to the state, maybe you don't get all of it back. So it's going to be interesting to see how this battle continues to play out. But the discussion has come back up. It may be something that they discuss in the October session, which has been floated around uh, as something that's more than likely going to happen as a full year's budget comes into view a little bit better. Of course, they passed a budget considering some federal funding and things like that. But the situation is fluid with COVID-19 and continues to change almost daily. Getting into your coronavirus statistics for the day, 133,125 cases statewide, 4,195 deaths, 1,568,564 tests, 89,083 have recovered, 1,335 are hospitalized on 214 ventilators. In Livingston Parish, 2,975 cases, 52 deaths, and 28,165 tests. Some quick news out of the Livingston Parish Public Schools. 150 students are quarantined along with several administrators and staff. Uh, it looks like this is a special needs group uh, that has been quarantined. Uh, this came out yesterday after the state said that they had opened up a new tracking method, which was focused on schools and, and any kind of super spreading event in schools. They reported that they already had one uh, upon some digging. It, was, it turned out it was right here in Livingston Parish. Again, uh, not at any specific school so far, just a special ed group. There is a special ed <clears throat> facility in Walker as part of the Livingston Parish Public School System. So we will see how that goes. They're unsure how many of that group tested positive for coronavirus. We That school officials are unsure. We're waiting for those numbers, but as of right now, at least 150 of them are quarantined along with about a dozen staff and administrators. So we're going to see uh, what comes out of those reports and continue to keep an eye on schools as they reopen, uh, especially in phase two, uh, a hybrid learning where 50 percent, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 50 percent of those uh, students are going to school day over day. Yesterday, a lot of news. Uh, we, we do live in college football country. Of course, LSU being the reigning national champion. Uh, this year, football is in limbo. Uh, despite what they might tell you, the Big Ten has canceled their fall season. They're going to look towards the spring. The Pac-12 did so as well. Later on yesterday evening, the Big 12 announced that they're going to try to move forward with football. Uh, <clears throat> they're going to try to move forward with football. Excuse me. Uh, Miss Amanda, I believe the six are administrators and teacher, or teachers. Excuse me. There are some administrators in the building who are also quarantined. I believe the whole building was quarantined. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, getting back to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Amanda. I'm, con I see. My suggestion. Well, is she? If she, there is a a, a specific building designated for uh, special education. I believe that's where this has occurred. Again, this is one of those things where uh, the the state announced we do have an initial issue with schools. The school board said it's at our special ed uh, specific building. My suggestion would be to call the central office uh, for more information. Uh, the more we, the more help we get in pushing them, the better, the better they are about getting us the information. We contacted them last night, um, late in the evening after some of those initial reports came out, because there, there are not a whole lot of details at this point. Uh, we're going to try to get them out as soon as possible. So I do apologize for that. All we know is it was at it was a special ed specific uh, class with 150 of them being involved. My guess uh, was that it was at the specific special education specific facility in Walker. But again, we are looking for confirmation on all of those details. Getting back uh, to this college football uh, situation, the Big 12 decided last night that they are going to move forward with their season. Uh, so that kept sort of the ACC and the SEC afloat, along with several other conferences. So we're going to be uh, keeping an eye. Um, we're going to be keeping an eye on that. 
uh, trying to see what happens in the coming days as you know, the Big Ten and Pac-12, despite some of these other conferences saying they're going to move forward, will continue to stay canceled. Uh, so time's going to tell on that one whether or not we are going to have college football or not. Of course, the you know practice has been pushed back. They're only in helmets. They're doing a lot of social distancing and interesting uh, things at their practice, and they are also, uh, you know, in groups and pods. I think is what they call them. And so it's a very different situation. They're doing the same thing at the high schools here, trying to keep these kids healthy, uh, so that a football season can occur. Of course, the whole football season has move, been moved back. A lot of it is going to be conference only. So we're going to keep an eye on that. The governor yesterday did say that he is unsure what the president's uh, most recent executive order regarding uh, COVID-19 benefits, how it's going to affect, uh, I guess you can say, uh, how it's going to affect Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana already had spent over a billion dollars on unemployment benefits. We are nearing that $100 million threshold where if we fall underneath that payroll taxes paid by businesses to the state of Louisiana get jacked up. Uh, the governor said that FEMA is requiring that states come up with 25% match on that extra $400 that the president assigned as an extension. So we're going to see uh, exactly where that's going to go in the coming days. Now, if Congress passes some sort of package that the president approves, then this is a moot point and we'll move on. Uh, however, in the meantime, the state is on the hook for that extra 25% of that $400, which is $100 per person per week. So we're going to see uh, exactly uh, how long the state can handle that uh, and uh, hopefully not reach that $100 million threshold. Let's just put it that way. There are still several uh, 100,000 people who are unemployed in Louisiana. I mean, I say several. I believe it's just over 200,000 uh, with about 55,000 in the Baton Rouge area and about seven to eight from Livingston Parish. Also want to discuss that the package that was approved, the executive order that was approved by President Donald Trump is still being discussed. Not entirely sure if it's legal yet. They will have to act underneath it until there is a judge's ruling from the Supreme Court, but going to be looking at uh, whether or not it is legal. Thought we'd have an answer by yesterday, but we still don't have an answer on the legality of it, so we will figure that out. 5.4 million people is the reported number of those who have lost jobs and lost health insurance during the spread of the novel coronavirus. Not a good thing to go together. Uh, this is worse than the 3.9 million that lost their health insurance back during the Great Recession between 2007 and 2010. Of course, this is already 5.4 million over just six months. We're going to are really closer to four, four and a half. So we're going to see how far, much farther that goes. Uh, and how many more people possibly could lose health insurance. Uh, it's an unfortunate number, and we hope, we hope that things will start going back in the right direction. Getting back into your traffic real quick. Uh, hang on, let me read these comments. Yes, ma'am, uh, Miss Amanda, I'm sorry. I, was, I know that there are some special ed classes that are at um, that are at the schools, that some special ed students do attend the schools. There are special ed students that do attend, um, I, I guess you can say, an, an outside uh, facility. I don't know if that's what you're talking about in terms of trailers. There is a building uh, on Burgess Avenue in Walker that is dedicated to that. So I, I, we may be on different pages here. Again, a lot of those details we still don't have in terms of uh, who, who it was and where they were when they got it and which facilities are closed. My guess would be if. Um, if your daughter is in a special ed class and you have not been contacted, I do believe uh, that y your your child is safe at this point. Uh, that it, your child, I'm guessing your child is one who actually attends special ed courses on specific campuses. I do believe those folks are okay. Now that's my belief. We are still trying to confirm that information, but I can appreciate your concern. I do understand. Uh, we're trying to get all those details as we can. Uh, so again, please try to uh, get in touch with your administrator or get in touch with the central office. The more kind of push we get from citizens, the faster they tend to send us information. And we're going to get that out just as soon as we can. Getting back into this traffic real quick, please remember that if you are commuting into Baton Rouge today, there are heavy delays on I-12 due to a couple of wrecks. It has caused some massive delays. Um, there are some massive delays uh, at 4-H Club Road, River Road, and 190. Uh, in on the western side of Denham Springs. 
So there, it's just going to be a tough commute into Baton Rouge this morning. There's also some delays on 64 heading into Central. Uh, of course, you have your regular school delays because school is back in session on a hybrid uh, schedule, 50% of students returning. But there's still some traffic, not as bad as it normally is in and around these schools, but it is pretty bad this morning. It's currently 79 degrees. 94 degrees is your high, 76 your overnight low. You're looking at some afternoon thunderstorms, 40% starting around 2 p.m. Want to remind folks of these mitigation efforts, please remember to wear a mask in public. It's a mandate. Six feet or more of distance between yourself and others in public. Wash your hands for 20 seconds or more with soap and water. Control your cough and your sneezing with an elbow or a tissue. Don't touch your face, uh, my favorite one. Uh, 25 or less to a gathering, preferably less, and stay home if you're sick and utilize telehealth to get in touch with your doctor. And try to stay home to work if at all possible. Before I get into my last spell, I didn't want to apologize to folks. This room is really hot. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why it's so hot. I probably should have checked the AC before I came and ran in here. Probably uh, my, my business partner probably got cold yesterday and turned it off. So I, I do apologize for that. It is very hot in here. Uh, one last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us for the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. Want to remind folks that we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We have a podcast page, which is free, which has audio and video versions. We have a coronavirus page, which is also free, getting you all that information we can. We also have a state a national news page called Breaking News uh, that also has arrests and accidents on it as well. That's all free, so you can go check that out. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Miss Joan. Yes, it was. Uh, that was uh, that was a pain, uh, but thankfully at this point it is uh, it is over for the time being. One last time, do appreciate you guys joining us this morning. We do hope you have a great day. It is going to be another hot one, at least until that rain comes, hopefully, this afternoon. So we do hope you have a great day. Hope you stay cool and stay dry. Sorry about the commute this morning, and we will see you tomorrow morning.